Hi everybody and welcome to my new channel, Luke's Power Art. On this channel, I will be helping you guys to analyze uh, some of the great comic book artists and to learn from their styles and take that information and to apply it to your own artwork. Uh, I'll also be showing you some of my own comic book artwork here as I go on the journey of creating my own comic books uh, and putting them out there for you guys and for anybody else who would like to read them. Today, I hope that you guys are as healthy as possible. Uh, things are a little bit uh, insane at the moment with the whole coronavirus thing. Uh, that's why I thought today as I'm doing some studying of some comic art, I would make a video so you guys might have something constructive to do with your downtime if you're at home currently. As you can see, we're gonna be doing a series here. This is episode one of a series called Learning from the Masters. And yes, I am putting Rob Liefeld in the category of a master. Rob has always been a huge influence on me. Um, so inspiring as an artist, such action-packed artwork, over-the-top artwork, which I love. I know some people don't, I do. You open a page of Rob Liefeld artwork and you go, oh my goodness, look at this. There's a guy over there and he's bending in a way he probably shouldn't be able to bend and he's shooting over there. and. All these sort of things that upset people on the internet that absolutely bring me joy. So today, uh, in episode one, we're going to be looking at how Rob Liefeld poses his characters. And so I wanted to uh, go through a number of images and just uh, look at what he's done and then do a little sketch myself beside it to point out the main components of each of those images. But before we actually go into that, first I want to just cover three key little issues when looking at Rob Liefeld. Number one, realism in comics. Um, the 90s was not a time, uh, I remember it well, I was a teenager, when comic books were meant to be realistic. Um, I think we've entered into a period of the last five to 10 years where it's almost mandatory that um, editors, uh, writers, uh, and even some fans out there are demanding that comic books look realistic. Uh, I don't understand this, to be honest with you. I, I, I have no interest in reading a comic book that looks realistic. Um, I can appreciate realistic looking artwork. There are some artists I look at and I go, wow, that's that's you know insane how cool that is, where they do a realistic landscape or a realistic uh, looking human being or just a, a life scene or something. But for me, you know, if I look out my window, I have the real world. You know, if I want to see a house and a car and a person in perfect proportion, I can just look out the window. I can see them. But what I don't have is 12 foot tall, muscly guys that have arms that look like oak trees that can punch through a wall and, and not break their hand. You know, I think that's the kind of cool, exciting stuff I always loved about comics. Secondly, proportions. Rob doesn't draw things in proportion, okay? He admits this himself in interviews. I think his latest stuff he's done um, uh, with Marvel, uh, some of the images I've seen, he has moved on. He's actually moved to doing stuff that's more in proportion, which is great, which means he's sort of grown as an artist and obviously he wants to draw different stuff and he realized the market today likes more realistic stuff. So he's moved a bit in that direction. But look, I don't care about proportions. You know, when someone says to me, you know, they see a picture of the Hulk or they see a picture of Juggernaut or they see a picture of Bad Rock, which is one of Rob's characters, and they go, oh, the head's too small for the body. I'm like, no, his muscles are just massive. Oh, it doesn't look right. The proportions aren't right. I'm like, well, don't read it then. You know, if you don't if you don't like characters looking like that, there are plenty of comics where they don't look like that. You know, I love it. I loved Bad Rock. I really love when I see the Hulk and he's just so ginormous and threatening. Same with Juggernaut. Um, and so, yeah, if, if you've got a problem with proportions, if you're one of these people, either an artist or just a, a reader, that just, just, you know, you get absolutely knocked when you see things out of proportion, Rob Liefeld stuff isn't going to be for you. But for those of you who love that sort of stuff like I do, he's the man. The third thing we're going to look at is very simple, action. Rob is an action man. If you ever hear him speak, he speaks a thousand miles an hour. He obviously has he's a very smart guy because his brain can keep up with that, moving very fast, obviously. So he can he can just really talk. Um, and and I think that he's the kind of guy that loves to move, you know, loves to get things done, loves action because uh, all of his comics are full of action. 
And so I think that um, uh, if you're someone that wants 10 pages of, uh, you know, Wolverine sitting around talking to Psylocke in a cafe, talking about their feelings, Rob Liefeld's work is not for you. But there are other comic book artists out there that do do that sort of stuff. So understand that when we come to look at this, that we're going to be looking at action poses. We're not going to be looking at necessarily uh, just a headshot or, or people standing around talking. We're looking at action poses today. All right, now, now that I've said all of that, let's get on to the first actual image we're going to be looking at. Here's an image of Cable from X-Force 1. And I am going to be drawing a little sketch of it next to it. Ironically, you can see the foot has been chopped off. That was me though. Okay, people always make fun of Rob and his feet. I actually cut that foot off there. So let's do this. Let's get my actual pen going. Let's put it on here and I think we're ready to go. All right, so you can see here quite a small head for the body. It's already pretty much out of proportion. I warned you. Okay, this is what Rob does. I love it. Don't get upset over it. Okay, so here we go. Get ahead. All right, now I'm going to be doing very rough. This is like almost like your uh, roughing out sort of stage. Okay, so I'm kind of mimicking this. I maybe should do it. Should I do it like that? No, I think I should do it like that. Okay. This is like your roughing out stage in the comic where you're doing your rough layouts. Just so you can look at the breakdown of the pieces of what's actually going on here. So here we go, a bit of a shoulder pad here coming down into the waist and the other shoulder pad comes up over here and we can see it comes down into here like that. And so that's a very general, I mean, you've got a lot of other stuff going on. I'm not going to put all of that detail in right now. I just want to block this in. We can get a sense of, you've got, here comes that sort of crutch area like that. Then you've got the leg comes out like this. There's a big knee guard there. The other leg is sort of foreshortened. Notice that, like this over here, just this section here. So you've got a little knee like that, and that comes in like that. And then you've got over here, you've got the arm. And you notice the shoulder is hidden behind the shoulder guard there, just over here. See how it's hidden there? All right, now we've sort of got this going on here, got the arm coming here. Just these awesome gloves. That make not having to draw all those arm muscles. Very cool. All right, and you sort of got the gun, sort of happening over here. Um, and so you got that, and then you got this other arm is coming out, kind of like that, and then it goes up into that and he's holding another gun up there and then you'll see comes down and there would be a foot down there or something of that nature and this this is sort of heading back a bit this way so you can kind of see and i'll join that up you can kind of see that and look obviously this isn't perfect i'm not trying to mimic it but you can see he's got the other stuff coming down here He's got a lot of pockets in here. And there's cool bullet belts shooting over here. There. That's a very rough layout. Um, you can see how dynamic this is. And you can also see down here, the ground is actually on an angle, which is why he's drawn it. So it's kind of like there, right? So that's kind of like he's turned everything on its side to make it more dynamic. Because you can see here are the uh, borders of the panel. So he's actually turned about 45 degrees to the left to make it more interesting. Um, what else do we need? Uh, so you can sort of see that and he's put a bit of a wall in the background to help out uh, just just to give a bit of a sense of depth behind the character but uh, so we can see here is the arm comes out 
forward, the leg comes out forward. Over here, we have another leg, as I said, foreshortened, and another leg's coming out there, and kind of missed. That comes down like that. And you can sort of see how this is a very dynamic pose that draws you in. It's an action pose. He's crouched, he's shooting, he's got both guns out. It's kind of, it look, almost looks like a Western. You can see with these sort of bullet belts, like he's a cowboy almost, like a cyber cowboy. Uh, and Cable, obviously one of my favorite characters of all time. But see the dynamics of it. See the basic shapes. You could replicate this in your drawing. Okay, so this is um, Prophet from Youngblood 2. One of my favorite characters. Okay, you notice this big shoulder pad comes back like that. Notice all around the bicep, tricep. Okay, like that. There's a the sword. See the hip kind of comes in there, and then you see that sort of comes down to there. Like this, this leg, get this right. It's all the way over here, kneecap, like that. This is here. dynamics of it and then we will bring this arm right over here okay he's doing something else over there big hair and you can see there's an X in here You can see this is a great way of tilting a character to make it more dynamic. Notice the legs sort of squatting again. Now he's bringing the shoulders down, he's tilting the body. Let's get to our next image. Yeah, from, from the sort of like the back shot, it's one of the things that Rob's really good at. He's really good at actually uh, doing stuff, uh, showing all sides of a battle. The easiest way to do this, to, to mimic this, we start drawing sort of the butt area come down with the leg yeah and he curves it back more towards the camera with the calf muscle coming down eventually into some kind of a heel that's running on the ground and then you can see this calf muscle is even more compacted in as we get to see the bottom of the foot as it's lifted up. See that? And make sure you put these curves in because that accentuates the angle. Okay, so then the back comes up. You got the deltoid, the arm shooting forward. Like this. I got the gun there. So you can certainly see that comes in. You see a little bit in the back of the head. And out to the side, we've got an arm shooting up. Like that. Uh, and probably I would say the foot was a little higher, so let me adjust that. Okay, so you're sort of seeing this sort of thing. Once again, notice how he's turned things on an angle. If I put the white there, you've got this line here, this line here, this line here, this line. It just adds more depth. Right, so in this case, you have a line um, that way. And these are all done to a vanishing point. Here, obviously, basic one point perspective. That sort of thing. So he's running down a hallway. You have these lines to make it 
not real. That's the roof. Mm. Okay. The floor down here. Sort of see that's sort of what he's going for. Uh, maybe a little bit more leaned over, but you can see the belts. All these lines from like this. So that's sort of what you're looking at there from a behind shot. You've also got this character down here that's also sort of running forward, taking on these guys. Why this is cool is that it actually is not a lot of comics aren't drawn from this perspective because. Artists spend a lot of time learning how to draw the muscles in the front of the body, like yeah, the pecs, and the quad muscles, and the legs, and the biceps, etc., etc., the face. But they don't spend a lot of time learning the different muscles at the back, so the hamstrings, the calf muscle, uh, the back muscles, for example. Uh, and so what you're seeing here is uh, someone who's decided they want to bring people in on the action from all angles, just like in a movie, and that's what Rob has done. Let's look what we've got here. Yeah, this is a cool one. Okay, so this is sort of a pose you see Beast Man in. This is a pose you'll see um, Blanca in from uh, Street Fighter. It's a, a common sort of pose. This has got a lot of foreshortening in it. See the hands here, comes back here, gradually back to the face and the legs behind it. I just move this a so you can see it fully. So look at this very quickly. Yeah, have the shoulders very large and looming here. Yeah. And then we have really big bicep coming in. The hands. Another bicep over here. You see more of a side arm over there. You see that coming in there too. And then you've got uh, continues on the side. There's the knee. There's the foot. A little bit of sort of thing over there, maybe a foot two. Um, that. We'll, be, we'll just so we can understand where I'm at. There we go, that's what he's doing. Now, hands. Like that. Thumb. really see that really pops off the page and so what he's done this is another you know, thing Rob does when people move forward they lose the neck notice that the guy's neck's covered by his hair or he's covered by something else his shoulders are really high and then the arms come forward and the legs sort of trail at the back uh, it's a really great way of making a character look like he's leaping forward towards you take the principle of this you could actually go his head shoulders like that and you draw a bit of body down like that usually the legs would be there I'm not going to do that because I want to show you how you can not just copy Rob's poses how you can use the principles to create your own poses which is where it's even cooler right so you got the shoulders down you might this be There's, you can take some principles there and you can add some other elements to make the arms go to the sides. You can add the leg here, so it is. So you can take these principles and you can apply it to another kind of pose, right? And once again, it's rough. It's, um, it's a layout, it's something to be looking pretty, guys, so don't worry about that. And this is what I, I, I create this video for. So you can go, okay, well, Rob drops his shoulders, he does things on angles, he, um, he has the legs bent. But what, what happens if I added that bit where he bends the legs and then did the jump or, or did an angle or maybe, you know, add the components to create your own, almost like puzzle pieces. Then you start to create truly dynamic looking guys. But to start with, you can 
copy poses, that's what most people do when they start. I might do this, let's just talk about this because this is a classic. My eye line is down. Notice the shoulders on the angle. Anyone noticing a pattern? There's a shadow there, shadow, shoulder. Okay, cool fist. All right, so his chest is kind of lost a bit there. The arm up here. That comes here, I'm going to a little bit. There's the other arm, it's the Rob Liefeld special. You don't see the shoulder on the other side. Okay, and then we have the leg come through. Whenever Rob's drawing a guy running, like you're going to see some of Rob's Captain America stuff. It's the same pose. Okay, I'm not going to draw the foot. The foot's a bit interesting. This is other knee. Okay. My foot's probably just that's good. Um, there you have it. And there you have see the top of his hairline. All right, and this is the punching thing, it's just punch you going fast, so. Bam, not bad, right? And so you might even have some lines like that. You just smack the guy across the screen. Uh, what are we seeing here? Shoulders tilt, head down. The whole of the, like your abs and everything, you, you can't see. So the leg comes through, it's, a, and it's an amazingly dynamic pose. Probably pretty difficult to do in real life, but obviously this is not real life. You can see here, the head, the shoulder comes down, the other shoulder is missing, you can see the forearm basically. Leg comes down, uh, classic Rob Liefeld. So this is a great running pose, it's a great fighting pose, and it's a pose that Rob uses a lot because it really does have the greatest impact, especially when punching a person across a page. Okay, so that's it for the drawing tips today, guys. Um, thanks very much for coming and spending some time with me. I hope that you've got a little bit more respect now for Rob Liefeld if you didn't before, and if you did enjoy Rob's work already, that you enjoyed what I presented today. So make sure you come back next Wednesday when there'll be our second installment of Learning from the Masters, where we're going to be looking at Rob Liefeld's rendering style and how he manages to draw a thousand lines on each drawing, and they still look amazing and cool. Please subscribe to the channel and share it with other people that you think may enjoy the content too. Uh, it'd also be great if you could jump over to Instagram and look up Luke's Power Art as we started a new page there. All the best and make sure your artwork is always powerful.